This is the uh, pump I've obtained. It's off a vehicle lift, uh, a bend pack vehicle lift. I think that's an American company. Um, it's hold to run, spring return. Obviously, if the lift goes up, you don't want the pump running all the time. Um, whether it's going to be some sort of twin cylinder vehicle lift or a single post, I'm not sure. I imagine it'd be a twin post. And then you simply return to off and then press the lever to lower the lift. You know, safety catches should be used. So it's going to be a two poster, I reckon. So what we're going to have to figure out is obviously we don't need that feature and we don't want spring return. Um, I've checked it, the duty cycle is quite good to leave the pump running permanently, but we need a return to tank loop. So this is going to be running permanently into the valve and a back to return. So we're going to have to mess about with these valves, find out which one is a return to tank, because currently you use one line for the in and the out. There is no return pipe as such because that releases the pressure and the vehicle lift comes down. So we need a pipe out pressure and return to tank, which we're going to have a little mess with that. Hopefully it can do it. It is 415 three phase. Um, but looking on the chart, it says... Well, 463 phase, or it will or can be wired as 208 to 230 three phase. So we're going to get an inverter off eBay. I've got one that I use for my pillar drill, you may have seen in another video. That's a three phase 220, but that's only good for one horsepower. This is a two horsepower motor, so my inverter that I've got now is not going to do it. Same inverter that I use for my laves. Um, so we're going to get a new bigger inverter, we're going for the 4 kilowatt I think, so uh, we can get right up there. Um, so I ain't got to buy another one again, maybe run two connections off it, I don't know yet. But yeah, so this is good for 3 phase 220. Like I say, uh, pressure relief valve set at 3500. Um, I'm hoping to get more than that out of it, I'm hoping to get 4000, maybe 4500. Um, the hoses that were fitted to this were only three thousand uh, four thousand psi hoses so that could be why the release set for three thousand five hundred but i think the pump's far more capable of that so there you go we have to work the switch out work the relief out we need the pressure and the return give it a good clean inside and hopefully this will work i don't even know that it works i'm hoping that it does okay the inverters arrived it's uh, it's that one, so that's uh, whoever you say that Yang inverter, cheap and cheerful, really. Four kilowatt, 220 volts, give you three phase 228, single phase to three phase. Um, all I've done at the moment is just wire it up with a bit of single phase just to have a a little mess with the settings, so we're going to have to sit down and have a little read with this. The other inverter, the one horsepower, is quite a simple one, quite a crude conversion, but this is a light better conversion, um, and also a lot more complicated. So, I've got a little cabinet for it. I've got this um, sodium discharge light box that you see in factory as well that's where it come from actually the factory was going to led lighting and um they were chucking loads of sodium lamps out obviously i've got no use for the sodium lamp so i uh, have got use for the casing uh yeah strip the internals out and there's some sort of starter unit charge unit for the sodium vapor lamp Kept its little cover, and obviously then you got the reflective material in there. And the beauty of this little cabinet is that was my first intention to put that in there. Um, but the only trouble is it doesn't meet the air requirements around the outside, which is a shame because it fits really sweet in there. 
So we're going to forget that side and we're going to mount it either in there or most likely like that there. And we'll have a little panel mount. Um, three phase, 220 socket on the outside. I'm going to use these louvers, cut them sides out, sink those in at the sides, maybe a piece of foam behind some pond filter or something to let the air in and out, what have you, but not the fumes, the angle grinder or anything else that's flying around in the garage. And then I'm going to make, I'm going to cut this off, I think. I was going to make a little cubby hole, little cupboard, but I've got absolutely no use for that. So we're going to cut the bottom off and then make a slide on cover. Again, possibly have a louver in, but have a little door there so I can just turn the inverter on and off rather than going inside the whole gubbins and getting a load of crap in there. That's my theory anyway. Okay, the box is now finished, the light box, uh, as it's turned out. Um, we'll go through the box in a minute, I'll show you all around that, but I think it's first important that we start with the inverter. Uh, spent quite a bit of time with the instruction manual, working it out, what have you. Uh, for me, the requirements were, I wanted to do away with using this pad, not permanently, but I wanted to have external controls, hence these, for the on-off. Um, I was worried about the oil, damage, sparks, like I said to you before, I didn't want to keep opening and closing, opening and closing to get in. And with the switch it's replaceable when you damage it. So quickly going through how to get that switch to work from here, because that took a bit of time. I've used DCM, which is your common, RST, which is strop, stroke, reset, and forward there. FOR forward. That's all the contacts you need to have a basic on off assembly. Uh, beautiful little bit of wiring inside because whatever you want to call it, circuitry. Uh, it creates a latching circuit for you. It, it's a lovely little safety circuit rather than on and stop. So if anything failed, it would drop the circuit just like a latching safety circuit would and it drops it. So I was really impressed with that. Um, so yeah, that's those contacts I've used there. All I've basically done is copied that one there. So I'll hold that there, which is on page 37. You can download this manual, okay? But it's just that drawer in there, it's page 37. It's still 37 when you download the PDF. So you've got your forward contact D1. D2 I've done away with because it's reverse. I don't need reverse, I don't want reverse. And then D3 is stop. And you just have to change some parameters, okay? So if you copy that, you'll basically have what I have there. The button is one pound, 37p, that one there, off eBay from China. Yeah, you have to wait 28 days, so I ordered three. Um, absolutely marvelous. It's, uh, it's not latching, it's just momentary push. So make sure you get that. It normally open, normally close contact. And if you want it one way or the other, you just simply swap the buttons over so the start can be momentary on or momentary off and vice versa for the stop. So that's that wire there. The rest is just simple wiring. So you're 220 in. And then your uh, 223 phase out. Obviously earthed. And then an earth to the casing. To the earth of the plug. So that's that bit done. So turning it on, I 
Okay, so this is ready to run. It's currently set up for amps. I'm not going to go through these controls. There's plenty of how to use this, and the manual's pretty damn good for this. So as you can see, flashing at the moment, no amps are being drawn. Okay, my run doesn't work, which I will come to in a minute. My stop also doesn't work, but you do you do still have the up and down speeds. Okay, changing the hertz. So if I press start on here now. You will see that's gone to powering this socket here. But obviously it's not drawing any amps because there's nothing connected to it. And then simply press the stop button there. And that's it, cuts power immediately. So I'll go for the settings that you need just to run a hydraulic pump, okay? So there's the lid on. I made a little hatch. So you could get to the speed control. I want the speed control so it brings in the cylinder slower or faster, a bit more cautious if you've got some casting or something a bit more brittle. That's simply that. And the pins go around the edge there, which we'll put those in in a sec. I popped a little rivet at the bottom to stop that unscrewing all the way. Okay, so. These are the settings I used in the parameters. So, PD1 is external buttons. What that does, default is zero, the new is one. So it will turn off those buttons there, you stop and you run, and it will answer to those contacts, which is those there. Okay, so parameter three, Triple zero, that's now set to 50 hertz. When it comes as new, it's set at zero hertz. Well, over here, we've got main frequency. You have to set to 50 or 60 elsewhere. Um, parameter 14 is currently 15 seconds. This is your ramp up and your ramp down times. Okay. Now, I don't need 15 seconds starting up a hydraulic pump. I didn't want to whack it straight into flat out because I want to keep the pump for a long time. So I changed the 15 seconds default on 14 to five. So that's a five second ramp up as soon as you press start till it gets to full speed, i.e. 50 Hertz. Parameter uh, 26, default is zero. The new is uh, number one. Coasting stop mode. When you press stop, okay, as it was at zero, it would be 15 seconds ramp down. Now, that's a little bit dangerous on a hydraulic press because you'll have power going to your hydraulics for a further 15 seconds once you've started panicking. So I simply change that to a coasting stop mode. So as soon as you press stop, all power is cut to the outgoing of the 223 phase. Uh, parameter 46, default is 14, and the new value is four. What that simply does, the terminal inside, this is again explained, on page 37, the parameter that the terminal output on the inside is currently used for a reset. Remember the RST? Well, this changes it to a stop to enable that to be a stop and not a reset. Okay, so, but that is explained on that page, so don't try and remember that. 78, um, this didn't seem to make much difference when I changed it, but the default is zero, the new value is one. This simply changes when you step your speed on there, okay, you're up and you're down, instead of jumping by 0 0.01 hertz, when you change it to one, which is actually the maximum, it changes to 0 0.1 hertz per button press instead of 0 0.01. So that's what parameter 78 does. Parameter 141, currently a zero when you buy the inverter, and that's simply your motor voltage. Well, over here it's 220. Parameter four, uh, 142, again a zero when you first buy it. I set it to six, which is the load of the motor, maximum load of the motor, which is six, if it's wired on to 20, 50 hertz. Um, then you've got parameter 144. This is just simply the speed of the motor, uh, and that's the new speed of the motor. If you set that correctly, it gives you a much better amp reading, hertz reading, and you can also do the current speed of the motor. Uh, it does read. It does work perfectly all right on that one because I accidentally kept it running on that one. 
Uh, and finally, parameter 23, reverse disable. So if I was to press reverse on there, it won't work. I don't want to start running hydraulic pumps backwards. So it was just simply to disable reverse. And that's why I didn't bother wiring it D2 on that drawing on page 37. I just left it out because we don't want the reverse feature. So that's all the parameters I changed from what you get when it's brand new. So let's show you all the casing and stuff. So, like I say, earth the casing, so there's an earth from there to there, obviously connected to your 220. Casing's earthed, that's earthed, everything's earthed, okay? Um, keep your little instructions in there, they're not near the fans, fans are all much higher than that. Put, uh, So, like I said, got a little slidey cover. You on off? That's actually an emergency off, as opposed to just an off. Got a little panel mount, uh, 220 free phase, 16 amp. Cut the louvers up. Remember, I was saying that. So, I cut the louvers up on there. Another one on there. Nothing on the top because of all the crap that flies around. And then the back, what well, all I've simply done with the back, obviously I've got to put a plug in there. Uh, all I've done with the back was just weld some scrap on just to raise the cabinet. One, to clear these riv nuts that I put in to hold the inverter in. And the other is to give some air across the back of the cabinet. Going against the cold wall, hot inverter, you're going to start creating condense. Things are going to rot away. It's not going to be very pleasant. So that is the sodium vapor lamp box. Everything well protected. This is a carrier for the cylinder. It's easy to show it like this uh, rather than when it's all assembled. So it was a piece of 20mm plate that I had cut. Uh, it's all laser cut. Because uh, there's no way I was going to start doing that with my plasma gear. I can't do anything like that. It's far more accurate. Um, this plate was 15 quid, uh, including all the cutting. And all I did was give them the dimensions of the cylinder. And they did all the programming, what have you. So then I've welded these on. A bit of 30mm solid bar. Got a little piece here. And a little piece here. They fit on there. Like that. Two little trucks, one here and one here, with some cheap Chinese bearings which do a top job. They're just welded in. They're never going to need to take those pins out. This isn't tapped yet. I'm not sure if it's going to be a little peg or a little bowl or I don't know. But that's just to simply go left to right and keep the cylinder no cracks place along the uh, the cross member. Okay. And these will simply fit in like that. So if you imagine one's there, and there'll be some little springs on the top. This video is probably going to be a little bit back to front because I'll probably start with it assembled, but just patch it together. Okay, so that's a little carrier in pieces. So this is uh, with the, the carriages assembled onto the item, onto this carrier for the cylinder. The cylinder's loose at the moment, this is as far as I've got. Um, from the last little bit I've welded this little bracket on. We've got this proportional valve on, spring centre, return to centre, i.e. dumps to tank as well so there's no back pressure from the pump so you can leave the pump continually running. Uh, it's proportional in the way of it will apply more pressure, more speed as you move the lever. I've put 
this little bolt here which fits into one of three holes on here and that's um, undercut to the core of the bolt so it fits nicely into the holes you can see how freely this moves on those bearings um, obviously when it's under like a traditional press normal pushing of bushes all that lifts up and this will use the traditional plate that you see on most presses the problem lies when you're retracting something using the cylinder in the retract method you put pressure on the bearings that uh, I've seen one that somebody's designed they've used cam follower bearings and they are going to bend they're going to be no good so the idea of this was we got the four springs they're set at a tension so it'll roll nice but when under retraction of the cylinder pulling a load it simply squashes the springs and these bars that you've seen in the last little bit sit on here so no load is put onto this little truck carriage thing. It just simply sits on these bars that go from back to front. You're never going to bend those, this 30 mil um, high carbon steel. Um, and what this press is capable of, that's not going to be an issue and there's very little overhang there. So it's simply, I'd say the idea of the springs are, protects the bearings. Incidentally, the valves by Flow Fit, and I think I got it off eBay. It was about forty quid. They've put the prices up recently, quite cheekily, by about a fiver. Um, and it was called Log Splitter or something like that by Flow Fit. Okay, so the aim of the game here, this is the finished setup, was uh, a small workshop press uh, sitting on the bench. Uh, I didn't want a floor stand. Didn't want nothing massive. Uh, simply pressing car wheel bearings out, uh, a bit of broaching, I wanted a, a bi-directional cylinder, I want to do push-pull broaching, I want to extract things from blind holes, I want this fixed rather than sitting on pins, I want to clamp fixtures to it, I've got to make much tooling, I have zero tooling at the moment, I have some nuts on top, uh, which incidentally are a weird thread, M33 by 2 um, so I've got those, uh, I haven't got time to start machining threads uh, for cylinders, so I just simply bought the nuts and I'll weld to them. Uh, make collars if I need to, uh, adapters, um, you know, to put different sizes of, of rod into them. Uh, so, yeah, I've got what I want, a small little press, uh, universal, push-pull, uh, quite a lot of pressure, more than I thought. Um, the uh, 3,500 on the pump was up to 4,000, and I left it at that. Uh, the proportional valve inside here is set at 3,500. The reason being for that, uh, these hoses, uh, everything you see hose-wise was new, except for these, and fittings was new, uh, except for these. Uh, these come from a very good source, uh, they were free, um, but they're only rated at 3,150, uh, sorry, 4,150, hence the uh, pressure relief valve was set at uh, 3,500 because of safety. Uh, these are brand new hoses, these ones. Okay, and all the fittings that you see are brand new. Uh, this whole item almost didn't happen. Originally when I was collecting pieces, I uh, got some price on these hoses, made to order, uh, rather than off the shelf, uh, by a company beginning with P, and I almost sacked the whole project when I found out how much the hoses cost. Uh, luckily, I found a local firm, a local hydraulics firm, who actually seemed to value their customs, and uh, they did well. If you look at the inline filter, the casting, the fittings, um, all the fittings on here, the hoses to the pressure gauges, the adapters for the hoses to the pressure gauges, so everything you see there, the inline filter, the hoses, the fittings, the lot, all come to £59 for 5000 PSI, and even by my standards, that's more than acceptable. Uh, pressure gauges are off eBay. They were six quid each, uh, rated at 6,000 PSI. Like I say, I'm running at 4,000 straight, 3,500. Uh, yeah, proportional valve, like I said, return to center. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna blank off the hole in the pump, properly gland it. It's not gonna sit like this on the bench because I've got zero room. Uh, well, that's all of that. So like I say, tooling's gonna be made in the future. So. Currently it's off, we're about, as soon as you press start, it'll be the five second ramp up time. 
uh, to the flat out power 50 Hz uh, 3450 RPM. Uh, that will give us 4000 and restricted at 3500 here. So that's now running flat out. That gives you that kind of travel speed. Okay, but also you can do it proportionally. Now if I bottom the cylinder out, you will see the pressure that we're reading, deadhead it, whatever you want to call it. I was very happy with the size of the ram, length and the uh, width of the ram, the diameter of the ram. So you can see on the outward stroke I'm currently running at 3000 psi, just over. Um, that's enough for now, that's enough until I can upgrade these hoses. 3000 psi puts this at 28 tonnes capability. To be honest, I don't think I'm even going to bother going above that. Okay, so that's 3000 psi. What's a nice touch, because we're using an inverter, we can actually slow the motor down, give it yet even more control without losing some pressure. So, so there's our 3000. We slow the hertz down. Let's take you to the screen, that's uh, 10 hertz. Uh, obviously from the 50. Um, I am going to put a proportional doofer on there in the future, but at the moment that will do. So we're running at 10 hertz, and as you can see, that, that pump is barely turning, okay? We've got a cylinder now that barely moves even at flat out, yet we can still get to 2,500 at the slowest that thing will run. Uh, well impressed, well impressed. And as you can see, it gives us a travel speed when you can actually see the nut, which doesn't really help you at the moment. You can see how slow that travel speed is. And what we can do is slow it down even more with a proportional valve. So we really can create this. 50 hertz. So you can see I've had a little mess with this plate. This is a 16, 18 mil plate. What you need to bear in mind here, that's a scrap pump off a vehicle lift. This is all collected stuff. The only new stuff is the gauges, the hoses and the valve. So here you go, this is a that's 18 mil plate. Remember we've got a capability of 3,500 on that valve, we've only used 2,500 and it's me who stopped it because in a minute it's going to flop off there. Remember I'm going to do proper tooling soon. So there you go. Okay, compared to the press channel, that's not that impressive. Uh, but for a, a bloke in his garage with bits of scrap, an inverter from China, I've succeeded.